So what was that moment like looking in the mirror the day you decide, okay, wait, enough is enough? Well, it was pretty crazy for me. It, um, it, it took a while to get to that point where enough was enough. I, I came home one night from work, turned on the, the um, Discovery Channel. I saw some guys going through Navy SEAL training and they were going through Hell Week and they were getting their ass just beat. You know, in and out of the water, guys ringing the bell. Um, they were just suffering. And I was weighing like 297 pounds. And I had to make a change in my life. You know, I was at an all time low and I wasn't going anywhere. And I was exactly what everybody said I was gonna be, which was nothing. So I had to make a change. Why suffering was the thing that triggered that thought? Well, for me, growing up, I came from a horrible background. I got called nigger every day of my life growing up. I was just an insecure, scared kid. And the only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. So long story short, what I realized was no one was here to help me. Mm. And the feeling I had every morning, when I looked in the mirror, was horrible. A kid going nowhere, a kid that was scared, and most kids will accept that and look for help. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. No one felt sorry for me. So the only way I could turn around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. What I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. Right. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. And the only way I can turn around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it callousing my mind right. through pain and suffering. What would your advice be to that 16 year old kid who's staring in the mirror does not like what he sees, but is still running from adversity? Well, my biggest advice to him is that, first of all, he won't like what I say to him. Because I'm gonna say the exact opposite of what the world, today's world is saying. So we read a bunch of books nowadays. As, as humans, we, we wanna find out how to be someone else. What we don't do is we don't go inside so literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that says, like, like we're writing a book every day of our lives, but we never read that book. So what I would challenge this young man or, or, or young woman to do is you have to look inside of yourself to see what you really want. What, what are you passionate about? We use these words and these little phrases of only the strong survive and all this other crap. They're all just fucking words. I get so tired of hearing people just talking. Like right now, someone may think Goggins is just talking. <laughs> you don't know me. So when I speak, I speak from passion, I speak from experience, I, I, I speak from suffering. I have to tell this young man or woman that the only way I believe, and this is just my experience in life, the only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow. But somewhere in their life, there was a point where they had a decision to make. They can go left or right on this path. Left was the easy route. Right was a hard route. A lot of people take the easy route. And they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey. And I would tell this young person, you gotta start your journey. It may suck, but it will. It will come out the other side where you're coasting. When I was growing up, I, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. Mm. So I would make up stories so, so then you would accept me into your world. I would, uh, everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I can blame kids at school, I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. Great mom, but she was doing her thing. Right. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading and I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what? For me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell, what the fuck is wrong with David Goggins? Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? 
Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every fucking day of your life. Roger that. So the things that we run from, we're running from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth, as painful and as brutal. I can't imagine how you pulled this off. Your first ultra marathon. I knew nothing about ultra marathons. I hadn't even run a marathon. I knew nothing about this world. So I Googled the, you know, the top 10 hardest races in the world. And what comes up is a Badwater 135. It's a 135 mile race through Death Valley in the summertime. And I hadn't put running shoes on in over a year. So I called Chris Costman up on a Wednesday. He says, look man, the only way you can qualify for my race is to run 100 miles at one time in 24 hours or less. There happened to be a race that Saturday. I signed up for this race, it's called the San Diego One Day, where you run around a one mile track for 24 hours to see how many miles you can get. My goal was 100 miles. Um, I got to mile 70, but I was done. My feet were broken. I was stretch fractures, shin splints, muscles were tearing. I was in bad shape. I'm, I'm messed up bad. I'm peeing blood down my leg and I'm, I can't stand up because my, my blood pressure is all messed up. I've been in three hell weeks, ranger school, overcome so many obstacles in my life. This last 30 miles of this race is when I realized a human being is not so human anymore. We have the ability to go in such a space if you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. I was in the worst pain in my entire life. I was, to me, on the brink of death. And I was able to chunk this 30 damn miles into small pieces. I was so driven, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say motivated because motivation's crap. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. This became a personal thing. This became me against this race, me against the kids that called me nigger, me against me. It, it, it just became something that I took so, so violently personal. I had to get compression tape and I taped up my ankles and I taped up my feet and that's how I got through that race. Like my shins hurt so bad from mm. having stretch fractures that the only way I could continue on Whoa. was I taped it so I wasn't doing the flexor motion that, that mm -hmm. activates your, your shins. And, and people may listen to this and say, this guy is sadistic, he's crazy, he's... No, if you know how I came up, you realize I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. Mm. That's all it is. God, I'm gonna ask the question. I, uh, I don't know if you have a good answer for this. I don't know if there is a good answer for this, but even I wanna know, how do you find and cultivate that drive? Like there is a kid right now watching this man and they feel like you felt, they feel lost, alone, broken, stupid, lazy. Like they're never going to amount to anything. And what you're talking about is the closest thing to a fucking superpower that this kid has ever heard. And right now he is on the edge of his seat. How does he, how does he like force himself to take that first step? I'm very fortunate that I grew up in a time when there was no phones and there was no social media. And I suggest, yes, I'm on social media on a very limited basis because I have a story to tell and it's a great platform. Use it as a platform, don't use it as your life. My biggest advice to give everybody in the world is like I say, we live in an external world. Everything is, is you gotta see it, touch it, it's, it's, it's external. If you can for the rest of your life live inside of yourself, Stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual, nigger, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you gotta flush it out. You gotta just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You gotta take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now for you to find greatness in yourself. You're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you gotta be quiet. 
shut the fuck up, go in a room, stop talking, search your soul, search your mind, search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you gotta go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why? So on that last 19 miles, mm -hmm. feet are broken, ankles are taped, shin splints, stress fractures. What are the words that are going through your mind? Are you in the cookie jar? I'm, I'm deep in the cookie jar. And the cookie jar is something that I've made up of all the failures of my life, all the things that I was, I failed and I went back. I failed and I went back and I finally succeeded. All the things that kicked my ass. I put them all in the cookie jar because at times of hell, even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test. It's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks. I take a second, I take the one second decision. I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, motherfucker, you, went, you were in three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy died because it was so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. You are, I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember, who the fuck I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood down my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity. I use it for motivation. I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You are. You gotta be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, he's not gonna stop. And that's, I took all the negative things, I need to go to the hospital, this and that, and I used it all. Who the hell could even get out of that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stretch fractures up? You did. All those things I used for motivation. What power have you found in the darkness? What the dark side is, is we all have a cookie jar and we all have a jar of fuck, man, where shit just, it just ain't going right. And in Hell Week, what they do in Hell Week, cause this is where I really went to the dark side. What they do in Hell Week is they design Hell Week to find your flaws. And they do a really good job of that. It's 130 hours of continuous training. You may get two hours of sleep and they beat the shit out of you and find everything wrong with your mentality. And then they start hell week. And that's the beauty of it. So what got me through horrible times was the dark side was I created, my name is David Goggins. I created Goggins. Goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of them. You wanna break my motherfucking legs? So be it. I have a way of going to a place like I did in that race where all the pain and suffering that they put on top of me in Hell Week, I will reverse that pain and suffering and I will take your soul. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt me. I use the hurt you're trying to put on me. I flip it upside down and use it. You trying to use it for kryptonite? No, it's power pillars for me. I'm, I'm using it for strength. I just flip negative into positive, that's all it is. Most people are broken by the bad things that happen to them, but every now and then 
there's a Goggins. There's somebody who understands how to use that power to understands how as a human being, it fucking drives you. Revenge is powerful. Like to be able to tap into that in a way that's controlled, that's right. but to be able to bring it in, to use it, to feel the energy. People are saying, man, you cuss all the fucking time. Why? <laughs> well, I hate to say it, the best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what, yeah, I went through Hell Week and man, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> no, that motherfucker takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to fucking start. It, it, it allows me to express right. where I was at at a point of my life. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? Why, how will you learn from me? People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. Oh God, I love that. We so tap true. dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up people. It's okay, trust me, it's okay. You might be called nigger one day, it's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word, it's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, You've done it. The, the younger generation quits. Not everybody. So I gotta, I gotta put that. People get their butt hurt. So not everybody. Most of this generation quits the second they get talked to. You did this wrong, you did this wrong, or, or they get yelled at. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more, is people go, well, well, why do you run if you hate it? That's life, man. That, and and, and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school, so guess what? I was dumb as shit. That's what, it, one plus one is two. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life, I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is gonna throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just gonna crumble and you're good for nobody. Talk to me about what it takes to be on one side of a door in Iraq or anywhere, knowing on the other side of the door, people who are not afraid of you, they're ready for you to come in and you still have, and they have guns, and you still have to breach that door. That's a very scary situation. When you are on one side of the door and your mind is racing because on the other side of that door, it could be no one. It could be four guys with four AK-47s. That, that door you're about to open could be booby-trapped. So once you open it, boom, your legs are gone. So there's a thousand things you think about when you're the first guy, second guy, third guy, getting ready to go in a room and flood it. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. And that's why so many people are lost when I start talking. You have the right. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior. And I, would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. 
the only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're going to die. It's like being a SEAL, you train with live ammo. You jump out of an airplane. Every, 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 everything you do, you could die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the military. Like, I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive, able to talk to you, able to still run. But when you sign up on that dial line to be a, like a SEAL, your mentality changes. I may not live. You got to accept that. And that's the mentality you have. And that's what makes you a warrior. If you're scared to die, you're a bad warrior. And so what do you use to push through? Is, what is that moment? What are you pulling up inside? I'm pulling up a lot of the, the uh, dark side of me, but I'm also looking at the guys to my left and to my right, realizing that um, we're here together, man. And I have, to, uh, I have to be strong for them. And they gotta be strong for me. A lot of people, either you like me or you don't, even in the SEAL teams, but when you get to that door or you get on that mission or you get in an op, all that shit's out the door, man. You know, you, you do it honestly. I mean, people say all the time in these movies and shit, you, you really out there fighting for that guy beside you. And you can't be a coward. Because you know what? And this is how I look at everything I do now in life, and this sums it up. I hated jumping out of airplanes. I hated shooting guns. I hated the job as a Navy SEAL but I did it because I wanted to change myself. Everything I do, I'm not really comfortable doing. But if you choose to go that route, to go be a Navy SEAL, you might as well go be the hardest motherfucker in the world. Because if you're choosing to do something, you have two routes. You can go there and be a little, a little weak person and get through barely, and that's your reputation. Or you can go through the hardest guy you can possibly be, and that's your reputation. So my whole thing is, if you're gonna choose to open that fucking door in Iraq or Afghanistan, open the motherfucker and go in hard. Because they're gonna remember you by slowly opening it and peeking in. So if you're gonna open it, and you made the mind to open it, don't crack it open. Open the fucking door and go in, that's with life. If you're choosing to do, if you're choosing to do something, attack it. Because they're gonna remember you as not attacking it. So I want to be remembered. You can hate me, but one thing you can't say about me, I didn't attack it. So that's the mentality you have. If you're gonna do something, you might as well attack it because you can do it anyway. Right. It still works for me in, in life as far as attacking things because uh, no, matter what I wanna, you know, no matter what avenue I choose, I wanna be the very best. Mm. And the very best may not be I'm number one. The very best is, did I leave everything inside of me out there? So attacking is not like, oh, I wanna win this or win that or be the best. The best is I'm, I'm, I'm running against myself and everything I do. And, and, that's, and that's what I attack. I attack myself. I'm always questioning myself. I'm always holding myself accountable. Talk to me about the accountability mirror. So the accountability mirror is something that I kinda came up with in high school. Like I said, I started shaving my head when I was 16, mm. and I got caught up in trying to impress so many people because no one liked me. So I developed so many different identities. Let me sag my pants. You know, let me, okay, let me pull my pants up. Let me, let me talk this way or act this way or be this way or, or whatever the hell it may be. God, dog, so many different things I did to try to fit in with so many different groups that when you look in the mirror, that's the one person you can't lie to. So every morning I would shave my head thinking, God, I would reflect back on some of the lies I may have told somebody or some of the ways I acted that I didn't feel comfortable doing. And I did it to impress other normal people. The key word there is normal, everyday people. I was trying to make other people like me. How pathetic is that? So I, th this mirror would always tell me, my, my, like my reflection would say, God, you are a pathetic man. How does that feel every day to be this way? So I would just start having myself accountable. How, how did I attack today? How did I attack yesterday? And if I didn't do something I was proud of, I'd write down a sticky note and I would fix it. It was funny, man. One, one movie I watched all the time was Rocky. 
And I related to Rocky a lot because of uh, kind of, you know, one of the smart guys, just tried real hard. And the one scene that I related a lot of my life to, still to this day, was Rocky won round 14. And this is where I got taken souls from. If you look at round 14 of Rocky one, Apollo is beating the shit out of Rocky. Rocky falls down in his corner. Mickey's saying, stay down, stay down. Rocky didn't hear a fucking soul. Apollo, after he knocked him down, turns around, hands in the air, like I finally knocked down this animal. Right. Apollo doesn't know it, but Rocky's getting up. Apollo turns around the second Rocky gets up. And Apollo looks at Rocky, and he, Apollo looks at him with a look of like Rocky just took his soul. He, he, Apollo shakes his head, and Rocky has his gloves and emotions towards Apollo. Come on, motherfucker, I'm still here. And this song comes on that I played. So when I brought the, Gimp the um, Ginsburg of Rolls records, it took me 17 hours to do 4,030 pull-ups. I listened to one song <laughs> for 17 hours. Two minutes and 17 seconds. Dun, 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 dun. I listened to that song for 17 hours. Wow. Non-stop, on, on repeat. So the image in my mind of a man was not one that had earrings, sagged his pants. I, I, I had this image in my head and I was going to fulfill that. And I, I didn't do any trends. I stopped trending, I stopped being this guy who whatever was new, fuck it, that's not what I believe in. I'm doing this, this is what I wanna be, and this is what I'm gonna be. So what I did to myself to become who I am today, it takes a great toll on your body. I may be telling you some of the story, I know the exact truth of how brutal my life was and how I shouldn't be on this show today and how the mind and how beautiful it is. So what brings me joy and happiness is knowing how beautiful the mind is and I'm one of the few people that didn't read about it, didn't experience it through some, some drug. I got to experience the beauty of true fucking willpower. True, fuck you, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, and I will succeed. Just me talking about that gives me a feeling, I know what I did, and I don't need to travel somewhere or to have this or have that. I have it all here in my mind. The beauty is remembering this young, dumb, what people call nigger, is now where I'm at today. And that is, when you finally get to that point for me, it's forever lasting peace. I, do need, I, I could die right now on this show and I'll be happy, ma'am. So that's, that's my happiness, is, is, is my reflection on the suffering of my journey, knowing I never quit, nor was I guided by anybody on this earth. I was guided by something much more powerful, and I listened, mm -hmm. and I chose the path of most resistance. Talent not required. I stretch out every day for at least two hours. I don't drink, I don't go out. My regimen is I wake up, have oatmeal, run, come back, hit the weights. Um, I'm a big sports guy. I don't leave the house if at all, but do stuff like this. And I stretch out at nighttime. I find people that I trust, which is a very small group of people, people who are honest and true to me, people who will die for me, and I'll die for them, which is a fucking small. Sure. And everybody else, man, you know, do you. And I stay to myself. And I let you do you. I don't judge people. I don't criticize you. You want to be a douchebag and be an ass and not love this country? Do whatever you want to do? I don't care, man. I fought for this country for you to do you. And I am all about you doing you because I'm going to fucking do me. And I'm going to do me until I'm fucking dead. And I believe I, I earned the right. A lot of people haven't earned the right. Just because you live in this country, I mean, you earned the right. You got you to gotta live a little bit. Live. And then have something to say or shut the fuck up, you know? If you don't know who you are, if you don't know who you are, 
I can't tell you who you are. I'm blessed enough to have survived the life I lived mm. and to come out the other side with a bunch of knowledge. So hopefully I can help people that believe that they're much less than what they truly are. Help them find greatness in themselves. And greatness isn't running 200 miles at a time or doing 4,000 pull-ups or being a SEAL. Mm. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You gotta first see it. You gotta first create this vision in your mind. And then that's when I come into play. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I gonna get there now? And that's when I come into play. But first you gotta create your own vision. And then it's not external. It's the, the vision created is inside of you. What is the impact that you wanna have on the world? And I have several answers for it. But the biggest one is we're all, we, we are all great. No matter if, if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man, we all have greatness. It just, you gotta find the courage. You gotta find the courage to put your Bose headphones on and silence the noise out of this world and to find it. And to find it because it's out there, but it's gonna take hard work, courage, self-discipline. It's gonna take all the non-cognitive skills, the, all the non-cognitive skills to be great. You know, smart is good, all this stuff is good. That's all cognitive. It's the non-cognitive skills that sets you apart from everybody else. And, and that's what it's all about.